Welcome to our first weekly Q&A and material on our channel that's related to the Colts. This is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because we put out material related to the Colts several times a week. And so let's go ahead and dive right in to questions that I've received here on YouTube and Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and LinkedIn and email, all sorts of things that have been coming up this week. And so first of all, I want to shout out to the new subscribers, Nicholas Drake and Lament, Lament Brumack. Welcome, and I hope that you're here with us as we get into this. And so the first comment that I had, and I'm not going to get into specifics of, you know, usernames and all that kind of stuff. Um, and sometimes these are just statements that people make, but I'm going to treat them just like I would any kind of questions. And I realize that it's just going to be a lot more useful if I can just address everybody in one place and one time, and then I can just give them a link to this, uh, this video and then see where the conversation goes and get the comments going in one place. Um, and so keep the comments coming and the questions coming for next week's Q&A as well. So uh, the statement, you contradict the Bible, the Nicene creeds contradict the Bible, the Book of Mormon and the Bible are one just as the Father and the Son are one. Joseph Smith did not write himself into the Bible. It's what the men removed from the Bible. The Joseph Smith translation is the most correct Bible on the earth, and without that, the book of Moses would have not ever come forth for our eternal benefit. Wow. This was a conversation that was already going, and so we're kind of in midstream here. Uh, so let's just take this one thing. that is about You contradict the Bible. Please show me where that I contradict the Bible. The, the Nicene creeds contradict the Bible. Well, again, show me where and how the Nicene creeds contradict the Bible. But I, I, I've done a video, and you can reference it. And, you know, should we be looking to the creeds to dictate our beliefs? I don't personally. I believe everything in the creeds, but I don't personally believe that we should be looking to the creeds. Or we should be looking to the Bible, and I can show you everything in the Trinity from the Bible. Um, and I do so in my book, In Spades. And so, moving on, the Book of Mormon and the Bible are one, just as the Father and the Son are one. No, they're not. Uh, they directly contradict each other in several places. And in fact, the Book of Mormon contradicts Pearl of Great Price. It contradicts Doctrine and Covenants. It con contradicts modern day revelations that have come since then. And so, they, they are not one and the same uh, by any stretch of the imagination, especially not as the Father and the Son are one. And uh, Joseph Smith did not write himself into the Bible. Yes, he did. In the Joseph Smith translation and Genesis, I believe it's in Genesis 49 when Jacob's given the predictions of all the, the 12 tribes. Um, I, I believe that he wrote himself into the Bible, literally. Uh, and he did that in several places. And then he interpreted several messianic prophecies. In fact, this very conversation, you've told me that you don't believe that the Old Testament prophecies are predicting Jesus, but they're actually predicting Joseph. And so I, I don't even know how you could say that. Uh, Joseph, the Joseph Smith translation is the most correct Bible on the earth. Why aren't the Mormons using it if the most correct Bible is on the earth? Why are they still using the King James and saying that it wasn't translated correctly, if that's the case? And two, no, it's not. Not even close. Not by a long shot. And without the Book of Moses, would have not ever come forth for our, our eternal benefits. And the Book of Moses is from the Egyptian funerary Book of the Dead. It's part of the whole Book of Abraham, Book of Moses package. And um, it has been discredited so many times. Uh, and it turns the whole thing of Genesis 1 into a plurality of gods um, and really turns it into a pagan text. And so, no, I don't believe in the book of Moses as scripture either. And so next we go to another comment from a YouTube. Yes, but I would add one more thing after taught in the Bible alone, through the Holy Spirit alone, to the glory of God alone. And that was a conversation uh, that was ongoing. And 
again, I would say that this particular individual believes that there's certain, you know, people who have the Holy Spirit and certain people who don't. And those are the ones who are true believers and other people can get saved in other ways. But, you know, the believers have the Holy Spirit and so they're the ones who can understand the Bible and they're the ones who are, you know, but really it doesn't sound like this individual believes that he is alone, yet there's other, many others that believe like him. And uh, so it was an interesting conversation. And so through the Holy Spirit alone was his way of throwing in there, um, you know, that it, it is salvation is through the Holy Spirit, meaning that uh, we don't have any kind of choice. It's kind of like this weird, you know, Calvin twist on Calvinism kind of thing he's got going on, but doing his own thing. But, uh, you know, fair enough, you know, through the Holy Spirit alone, I don't, have any, I don't have any problem with that. I have a problem with the way that you're defining that and your terminology that you're using. Third comment. Okay, this is why God wanted me to be a $1 apologist. I talked to my son last night and he is out. Talking about the ICOC. Oh, what's up, Tim? And uh, I talked to my daughter this morning and thought I failed, but she did her research and now she is out. Mostly. She has to convince her husband. Um... This all started with my other son-in-law telling my son he was in a cult, but for, but for non-cult reasons. I asked my son what church he went to, and he said Church of Christ. I asked him which one, and he didn't know. So I told him that there are at least two, and the international one was a cult. He didn't think this was international, but we looked it up, and it was. He still believed that his church was okay, so I asked him about baptism. They told him that he needed to be baptized again in the ICOC. I asked him when was the thief on the cross baptized, and he started researching. I'll have him contact you. I'll ask my daughter to contact you as well. So that is awesome. Just so you know, uh, Tim is an active follower on this YouTube channel. And, um, and he saw my video on the International Church of Christ. And he realized, oh, my kids are in that, I think. And so he got in contact with them. Just in boldness he's in love, he told them, hey, I'm concerned. Look into this. And his son was already out. His daughter actually took him up on it. And she got in contact with me. And um, she's willing in the future to be a, a person on the show, a guest on the show. And I, I, I look forward to talking with her more, helping her transition and finding a healthy church uh, in the future. Um, and uh, so amazing thing uh, that's happened. If you ask, why do I do this? That's why, because uh, God's grace is greater than any evil that man can perpetrate. And so we have an individual, a few individuals that are going to come out with an abusive organization, get out of the mind control stuff, and start transitioning back towards a healthy church that's uh, emphasizing what Jesus did for us, not what man's doing for us, or some kind of behavior control information control, thought control, emotional control stuff. So awesome, 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 Tim. And you're the only one I'm going to probably know, know by name. Anyway, uh, okay, you can interview me. When should, when should we do the interview? I never asked to interview you. I, um, I was asking, I'm reaching out to different uh, YouTube apologetics channels and podcasts and things like that to see if they'd like to collaborate um, in my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts. And I've done several podcasts in interviews and so i'm just offering and i'll throw this out there if uh, you have you know a blog a podcast youtube channel or some means of spreading you know some kind of presence um if you're willing to interview me in relation to my book sharing jesus with the colts um i'm willing to give you a free digital copy of the book and return the favor and interview me you on my youtube channel on, on a subject of your choice related to, you know, apologetics, cults, and things of that nature. And so uh, there are those who are taking me up on that offer and we're looking at, you know, setting more dates in the future. And so if that fits into your category, uh, but unfortunately this individual is antagonistic and, um, I, and so no, the offer was not done to you and it wasn't just an offer to interview you. Uh, it was a collaboration um, and a partnership that I was offering. So, next comment. Wow, a few things. First, how does a finite creature carry infinite sins? And so this, again, was Tim, and it was in relation to my video on the Seventh-day Adventist um, church and Ellen Jean White's teaching that of the scapegoat 
that if you don't know that the Seventh-day Adventists teach that ultimately the sins of the world are going to be cast upon the devil and he's going to carry off our sins into the distance. So Jesus ultimately doesn't pay for our sins, carry our sins away. It's the devil. And so Tim writes, how does a finite creature carry infinite sins? I have no idea, Tim. Jesus is infinite. That's why he's the only one who could take our sins upon him. Satan is just an angel, a finite creature. Not a good idea to rely on him. I agree completely and wholeheartedly. I think it's scary beyond measure that a church that claims to be Christian would ultimately believe that our salvation lies with Satan. That's crazy creepy. Second, all of these cults are inspired by the father of lies. This is his way of getting people to inadvertently worship him, even when they think they are worshiping the creator. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Also, it's unfathomable to me that any Christian church could think for a moment that Jesus is an infinite. Why do they assume that he needs to read in order to know if we are worthy or not? <laughs> I agree again. What he's, uh, what he's referring to now is the Seventh-day Adventist teaching, Ellen G. White, that Jesus, uh, in 1844, the reason why he didn't come back is he moved from the Most Holy Place into, or he moved into the Most Holy Place and, and into where he's going through the files in heaven. And he's um, figuring out who is worthy to get into his, his kingdom. And that's what he's been doing since 1844. And absolutely, if he is God, he doesn't need files. He doesn't need records. He just knows it. So absolutely, Tim, spot on. This question is completely ignoring the fact that we aren't worthy at all, but we are made worthy through a sacrifice, even while we are still unworthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Jesus doesn't need to read, not even for a moment, to know if we are worthy. He's God. P.S. I love the Kindle version of your book. I was able to quickly and easily switch to the ICOC chapter of your book to let my son read it. It was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And I agree. The Kindle version is awesome. It's very user-friendly. You just click on the footnote. You go straight there. You click on like the chapter heading, the page number, all that kind of stuff. And it's just like you can bounce back and forth all throughout that through to the index and to all this other stuff. Very, very awesome. Um, so thank you for that. And uh, so another person accepted my offer, you know, to collaborate. Absolutely. I sent you an email. So thank you for that. I'll be in touch and um, looking forward to that. And uh, so... Another person is but Christianity. Okay, so <laughs> this is Timothy Lane's son. I didn't spend a lot of time in the church, but I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. And so this that's the same Timothy and his son that had come out of the ICOC looking forward to working with the son and daughter. And uh, Maybe I can get all three of them on the line and um, we can do a collaborative thing. That would be awesome. I need to figure out how to work Google Hangouts so I can get this stuff going, start having guests on this channel that would be amazing. Uh, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, next, I clicked on this expecting to see you interview and a follower of the marvelous work in a wonder. I expected to see you actually having a conversation with someone. What I saw was you telling about a conversation that you supposedly had but did not name names. Very disappointing. If you want to know about the marvelous work in a wonder, you should read the books. Not going to say what he said in between. Call Nemelka and challenge him publicly. You need to do your homework. Don't tell us about an interview conversation with nobody named as the interviewee. Poor planning on your part. Have a nice day. That's because I was trying to protect the identity of the person that I had a conversation with. And if you want to see that video, it's called, you know, Conversation with a Follower of Chris Nemelka and the Sealed Portion. Uh, it's one of my more popular videos anyway. Uh, it, so if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch the video. It'll give you insight. I, I've run into this gentleman before. He is a follower of Christopher, Christopher Namelka. And uh, there's nothing followable about Christopher Namelka or the sealed portion. It's ridiculous. And um, so anyway, that was his comments. Hi, I could see... Could you please email me at Witnesses for Jesus, another person who wants to take me up on my offer uh, to collaborate. So awesome. Looking forward to that. Uh, a lot of your proof can be explained by the Bible or through understanding through 
rather than misunderstanding, which Jason seems to be doing a lot. I, I love it when there's just a blanket statement without any examples. Please, if you disagree with something that I say, give me an example. Tell me what you disagree with so that I can look into it. I will look into it. I will dialogue with you on it. I, I'm willing to admit if I am wrong, if my facts are wrong. I, I, I'm willing to do that. I I've, haven't had that happen when I've come back and challenged somebody who just says this. The reason why they do this is so that people can just go and if they're looking at the comment section, it's kind of like leaving a bad review. They're hoping that people would just discredit and not watch or not pay attention to anything I say about the, the, that particular group because they don't agree with what I said. But rather than showing that what I said was wrong, they just want to argue, you know, they just want to attack me as a person. So let's go to Facebook and shout out to the new likes on the people of the free gift page, Facebook page. Jonathan P. Phillips, Christian Ling, Cassandra Whistler, Mary Drenning. Welcome. And uh, hopefully you're with us and watching this. So the Seventh Day Adventist Church is not a cult. What is the first comment? And my question is, did you watch the video? Do you know about the teachings? I just talked about some of them from a previous comment uh, that are going on. Uh, that would be my question to you and my challenge to you. Have you watched the video? Have you read the content in the book? Have you read others' comments that are alarmed and you know kind of creeped out by some of the doctrines and teachings and practices of the group? Having, what do you think about the former members' comments about you know mind control practices within the Seventh Day Adventist Church? I you know I just want to throw in, in what did I say that you disagree with? Again, Jesus and Lucifer are spiritual brothers, and so are you, as well as all men. Furthermore, we have had fathers in our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more? Rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirits and live. Hebrews 12, 9. I think that your ideas of Mormonism are what are fabricated lull. Okay, so the pre existence and Jesus and Lucifer being spirit brothers along with all the rest of us. And Hebrews 12, 9. What does it mean that God is the Father of our spirits? Well, Father is another way, to, you know, if you are the Creator. Uh, of something it's another way of expressing that there there's no way that you can contrive what joseph smith did um in teaching that before this earth uh, we were pre-existing spirits in heaven and the, particularly the most offensive thing honestly about the teaching is that it takes away from the uniqueness of jesus and it, it, it makes him less than god and equal with god he is a creation of god but then also, and so he's on the same level as us, but he just has a different role and function. And I just think that's really messed up. Uh, it also uh, takes away from his uniqueness when Jesus says all throughout the Gospels that I was sent from God. I am the son of God. Um, all of these things that it makes them irrelevant. I came down from heaven. I was sent from God. That would be true of every single one of us. Uh, everything that Jesus claimed, and yet uh, the, the Pharisees never said that, they never claimed that. Uh, they, in fact, they thought he was blaspheming because he was claiming it. So there, there's just no way you can find the pre-existence in the Bible. And I, I have a whole section in my book, uh, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, on that topic, um, addressing what Jesus taught directly about the pre-existence, and so you can uh, reference that as well. So, not the truth was another comment. What? What was not the truth? I love those blanket comments. Okay, so another one. The temple is the key to the exaltation with which God desires to grace his children, which is an aspect of his glory. You start with salvation, the gate, and then progress from there. Wow. Okay, so if you want to know whether Mormons believe this stuff, this is a Mormon saying that the temple is the key to exaltation, which is, in their teaching, becoming a god. Okay? So, uh, which God desires to grace his children 
and which is an aspect of his glory. So, you know, they, and just so you know, that's how they see it. Uh, they believe that God is wanting to give us that, that that's part of his plan. And, you know, I guess on that level, if that was true and that's what the Bible taught, then I wouldn't have any problems with it. But I, going through the temple is not as simple as, you know, you being Mormon, you want to say, I want to go through the temple. It's about getting a temple recommend, which means you're keeping the word of wisdom, which means you're tithing, which means you're fulfilling your callings, which means that you were baptized, which means that you were keeping your covenants. It means a lot of things. And so to say that that's grace, Paul says, if it's grace, then it, it's not work. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And if it's work, it's not grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Romans eleven six, Check it out. So, from email, yes, I recently left. This is the daughter of Tim. And uh, so this is this end of it. Actually, very recently, like last Sunday, my dad contacted me very worried about the church and told me to look into them as a cult. I was skeptical and didn't expect to find anything. I was actually thinking I'd find proof to the opposite for me to bring to him. But after reading a few things and watching a few videos, things have started to click and this kind of dread washed over me as I realized my dad was right. So it's all still very new, but I'm not going back. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And like I said, I'm looking forward to having you guys as a guest on the show. And um, so that is all the time. That's all the questions for today. If, um, what do you think about this? How, you know, how would you address some of those uh, t comments, questions, concerns? Is there something that I left out that you might have said? Go ahead and put it in the comments down below. If you're somebody who uh, that was addressed to and you, I gave you the link and you came back here and you heard it and you want to continue the conversation, go ahead and do that in the comments down below. And if you have questions about something that I said or just questions in general about uh, some of the topics that related here, then go ahead and put those in the comments down below. And if you are new here to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like the content for today and share this video with others in your life who are endeavoring to reach those caught in religion and share the gospel with them. And so until next time, may God's grace be with you.